welcome to New Game Plus. I'm Tim, I'm joined by Donald, how are you? I am currently saving all the money I can because we have just found out the price of the PlayStation VR headset and Tim, it ain't cheap. No, it's certainly not. Uh, overseas, it's like 400 US. In Australia, it'll be 550-ish. That's not including the mandatory PlayStation camera that you need for head tracking, and that doesn't, that doesn't include the PlayStation 4 itself. Yes, and the Move controllers as well. Oh, I've got Move controls for days. Don't, don't you worry about that. <laughs> not everyone plays Johann Sebastian Joust, they no should. matter how good they it is. Should. Um, but it's certainly a lower price point than what we've come to expect from the HTC Vive as well as yeah. the Oculus Rift. And that's not taking into account the high-end PC that you need for the Oculus Rift, nor the high-end PC plus the gigantic room you need to play the Vive. Yes, uh, and uh, I'm very happy that I took the, the test for the Valve yeah. Vive, uh, and my computer is not good enough to run it, so I'm just really? going to... you, the PC person, <laughs> without a high-end PC? What is... It's a high-end PC of, like, five years ago. Uh. So, with, with that, uh, I know at least I'd need to buy a new PC and a Vive, and that's... A, a bit steep for my liking. But it's good to see that like each of the three devices are t att attracting or targeting different areas of the market with the PlayStation VR going for the much more accessible market whilst the HTC Vive is very much trying to chase the VR dream. And the VR dream is exciting, isn't it, Tim? It certainly is. Uh, trying out a few demos myself. Uh, I'm still waiting for that killer app. Yeah. What game are we buying uh, the VR for the VR system, so I think we'll see a lot of games integration with yeah. uh, the PlayStation uh, PlayStation VR because it's running on a game system. Yeah. Whereas we'll see a lot of new and interesting things coming out on the PC. Wait ones. for Gran Turismo VR coming out in twenty twenty something. <laughs> yes, uh, but we have games later on in the episode as well yes. that we're reviewing. We take a look at Bravely Second, but first up, Twilight Princess HD. <laughs> Now, Charlotte, it's really hard to believe that The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is now 10 years old. Can you not? Like, seriously, that's... I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, t I'm getting older too. We're, we're all getting older <laughs> at this point. But what any self-respecting video game company does during that anniversary is release a HDified reboot... But not, even, not even a reboot, but a, re a remaster. Uh, like a re remaster. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what Nintendo has done here with The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. Yeah, so one thing, I like, I love the gamepad uh, for item management, and that's obviously that's something they've done with Twilight Princess HD. They've also added um, some other things, like you can view the minimap from it, you can uh, swap between Wolf, Wolf Link and Normal Link uh, on the fly using the gamepad. Like, they're just, it's just nice convenience. I mean, with the omission of Wolf Link, uh, it does a lot of the stuff that uh, Wind Waker HD does as well. So it's got mm. all those those conveniences that you never thought you really wanted, mm. um, but they're there, and it makes the game kind of ebb and flow a little bit easier. It's a bit of a shame that the sword play and some of the other um, exploration elements in uh, Twilight Princess are, are quite clunky. I mean, yeah, for it's a sort, game. It sort of, it felt, when, when I first played, I mean, 10 years ago, it felt fine, but sort of, as I played more games, things have been refined, and it just sort of, it hasn't really, it's fine, but it hasn't aged that well. It feels a bit clunky, Link feels a bit slow. It's just, yeah. yeah. It's not even the controls either. Sometimes the visuals, like the visuals, they're serviceable, they do their job, like the uh, the draw distance is really well done, mm. there's less fuzzy things happening, less jaggies on some of the character models, yep. which is fantastic, mm. but the textures don't seem to be touched up at all, which kind of feels like they've gone three quarters way there, and then they've just kind of dropped the ball. Yeah, so the, it, like, like Cardi said, it does, it looks fine, I mean, it, it doesn't look terrible, but yeah, it doesn't really feel like it's really been improved all that much. That sort of mm. feels, feels pretty similar visually. Now there are a couple of additions to this as well. So you've still got the story content and a few other things, but you do have an additional temple, mm. which, wait for it, <laughs> is unlocked via Amiibo. So if you don't actually have the Amiibo that comes bundled with the game, you're unable to access it. There are some other Amiibo as well, uh, Zelda-centric Amiibo that can be uh, activated that give you all sorts of buffs as well as debuffs. Yeah, so like the Ganondorf one makes you take double damage and does all this other stuff. The Link and, Link and Toon Link will replenish your arrows. I think Zelda and Sheik replenish your hearts. Yeah. So, so it's pretty cool stuff. Like it's nice optional stuff. If you have the Amiibos, they'll be able to help you out. Yeah, and so for, for an added challenge as well, there's also hero yeah. mode on top yeah, of that. Yeah. So you can go as hard or as soft as you want but when it all comes down to it I honestly think if you've already played uh, Twilight Princess like both of us mm. you probably want to give it a miss but for those who missed it the first time around on the GameCube or the Wii I'd say it's mm. worth giving a revisit or just experiencing for the first time yeah unless you really really love the game or as Cardi said unless you missed it you should probably I'd probably recommend you skip this one I reckon. spot on yep
So Kenny, I've got you back for another shmuppening. I'm gonna call it a shmuppening because we've got another shmup game. This time, side scroll instead of top down. It's Death Smiles for the PC on Steam. Oh, yep, and oh, you said there was an Xbox 360 version. There is, and they're very, very similar. So if you've actually got that one, maybe not grab this one. But that said, this game is very, very fun. Mm, yes. Well, first time playing it here, and the first thing I notice is <gasps> you can shoot both ways, and it's like I've never seen that before. It, as like a shmup, it's very, I guess, innovative in a few things. They've got like the counter bullets, which is the ones that your familiar eats and stuff. It's got, I guess, a familiar, so you've got two things you can control and shoot with. There's a lot there for someone who's, I guess, coming into it new. There's a lot of difficulty modes, especially like the Black Label Edition, which is basically the uh, hard mode for the uh, from the arcade modes. So if you're looking there for challenge, it's definitely going to be there. Mm. Yep, the Black Label Edition has the extra character as well, Sakura, mm. over the normal edition. Yes, best waifu you say? Yeah, best waifu. <laughs> that said, it's very nice visually. The sound, uh, music is very nice. The game itself plays very, very well. If you're on a PC that's old, it's probably still going to run pretty well because it was from an arcade, and even then, Xbox 360 it probably didn't run horribly off that too. So I think so coming from someone who's actually played it on Xbox 360 though, I probably wouldn't recommend it just because there is not much new content. Mm. Well, for someone who's playing it the first time, uh, I found that oh, the bosses are a little bit easy. On mm. uh, They die. Uh, faster than some other bosses, they don't have it as much as many phases. And uh, on normal mode, you go, oh yeah, this is this is really easy. But, that, but that's where the other difficulties are there for, especially yeah. black label. Now there there there's as my thing. When once you get to the hard mode and you're trying to control your familiar and put your familiar between you and those suicide bullets, mm. that that's where the meat of the game is. And it's where and it that's gets really fun. hard. Yeah, I can't handle. at the Melbourne Magic the Gathering Grand Prix. Each event has a different format and this Grand Prix's format is modern. Very, very cool, but if you do not have a modern deck, do not fear because you can do all manner of things at a Grand Prix. You can play side events, you can meet artists, you can trade with people, or you can just sit back and watch the action. Let's check it out. people at home, what is a Grand Prix? What's involved? So Grand Prix are very exciting events because they are open events. So anybody can participate, um, just like no, you don't have to qualify. And it's really the opportunity just like to play magic in a different level because most, you know, ma vast majority of magic events, they are very small events at the local store. And now and then players have the chance just like to participate in events of that size. Here we will have over 1,000 players mm -hmm. from various countries. So just all of a sudden you can mingle and have the sense that there is that huge, huge community around. And of course, you know, if you are doing well on top of that, you can eventually even qualify for the Pro Tour. We got into the escape room and the first thing they did was take our phones and then tell us we had to do maths in our heads. This is what our grade three teachers had prepared us for, but apparently not very well. We found prime numbers, we built a zombie, we assisted a wizard. It was a lot of fun and we did it in 10 minutes, which according to the guy was very good. And I'm just gonna pretend that he really meant that and doesn't say that to everyone. It was a good time. So you're an artist for Magic the Gathering card? That's what they tell me. What's the process of doing the art for Magic the Gathering card? Um, it's pretty straightforward. They'll, they'll tell you what they want. It's not like... You... Some people theorize that we just submit a bunch of images and they just kind of pick. Yeah. Um, no, it's a little more structured than that. They, they tell you what they want, they give you any visual reference you might need. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll submit a sketch and then they'll kind of go from there. Tell you what you need to change, keep the same. Okay, so what is your favorite magic card that you've worked on from a I, plane perspective? My goodness, uh, there's a print way down there, but um, I say Unmasked for Mercadian Masks. It just turned out 
the best, I think, in my personal opinion. In terms of art, and, and sometimes you'll see it in the sideboard of like a dredge deck or something. What was the process of that? So what, what did they tell you that they wanted and then how did it? Oh, it was a, it was a story element. So it's uh, in the story, Volrath is making his appearance. So uh, he was disguised as one of the other characters, a female character, strangely enough, but Volrath is a shapeshifter. So it's him just kind of unmasking himself. Ah, oh, I was this character all along. Ha ha ha. Uh, yes. Cool. <laughs> so that, that was it. Um, and, and in terms of the painting, um, uh, after that it was kind of up to me. It was this central character with Volrath kind of making his appearance as Volrath does and um, how it was done was, yeah. Melbourne GP was a lot of fun. Don't forget, Sydney GP is coming up in July. It's going to be a sealed event with Shadows of Innistrad. It'll be a brand new set. Really, really cool. Can't wait to see it. So the Warriors games have had a large variety in its like story. It's got the main ones, you know, your main Musou games. Yeah. You've had what, your high rules. High rules. Yeah. If anything, it's probably the most adaptable format to licensed titles. Mm. Like, let's be real, I mean, there's One Piece is Namco, but it's still yeah. basically a Warriors game. Yeah. Uh, Naruto used to be a lot like that, but now it's a little bit more kind of focused on two people. And then strange stuff like Arslan comes along. Arslan, I think, really, really fits it very well. Arslan, The Legend of Warriors, it's a Warriors game in its, like, salt. Like, it's based around big combat battles. Yeah. It's based around fighting massive amount of enemies and having these, like, heroic figures. So they don't have to actually sculpt it to match the game style. The game style works because it, it is it is those epic battles where it's like One Piece and Hyrule Warriors, you know, it's like when you ever fight that many enemies at once in Zelda. Like. It's basically, if you think about it, this is the Japanese Lord of the Rings. Yes. And if you think about the Lord of the Rings games, they were basically Musa Warriors. Yeah, yeah, like that's real. Massive amount of enemies, you level up, you grind through things, you get special abilities. It was a Musa game was it before? No, it was basically around the same About time. About the same time, yeah. Like, yeah. And this fits it really, really well. Like, the, everyone has a different feel. They have different weapons. They all cycle. You can actually cycle through weapons. You have weapon change, weapon combo changes, things like that. It works really, really well. Art style, I kind of enjoy, but it's edgy. Yeah, look, it, it, I mean, PS4 does have anti aliasing. Yeah, that's and the issue. It still means it, yes. But the actual character models themselves look great. Mm. The actual cell shading comes across very, yeah. very well. It sounds very good. Like, it, 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 it nails the presentation, but yep. does it bring you into the series? Like, are you going to play this and then go on and... That's the thing. It tells the story really, really well. Like, it focuses on telling the story, which maybe you don't really want as much as a person that's actually already watched the anime and stuff. Yeah. But, it's got, yeah, skippable cutscenes straight away. You don't have to watch everything. You can just play it if you, you want to. You can just play it if you so want So, I guess you could necessarily... You don't have to watch the anime to appreciate this yep. and vice versa. Yep. So with the release of Samurai Warriors for Empires recently, uh, a lot of new people are being introduced to the franchise, either through Samurai Warriors 4 or through any of the spin-off games. Uh, they've had Arslan, we've got Attack on Titan coming up. And with this new influx of fans, we have a lot of the sort of obvious questions being asked, like what does Empires do? Isn't it set in feudal Japan? What does Muso mean? What is a Warriors game anyway? So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about what these different terms mean. So the first one and most obvious is what Muso means, and Muso basically translates as unrivaled. The Japanese Warriors games are all called Muso in some format or, or another, and it's usually Dynasty Muso, Samurai Muso, anything like that. Now, once a game has been released as a standard entry, they usually have a couple of special editions released. The first one, Extreme Legends, which adds new characters, new campaigns, and usually a new weapon system. And the Empires games, which introduces a strategy element, usually with a, a map and uh, recruiting people through talking to them, things like that. So Samurai Warriors for Empires is basically the first game with a map mode added, as well as politics and other sort of world building, uh, building elements. Now, which game should you start with? The basic answer to that is pretty much any of them. So Samurai Warriors 4 
introduces the format, it has all the basic characters and is a full game. Samurai Warriors 4 2 upgrades the leveling system, adds a couple new characters, adds some new scenarios. Samurai Warriors 4 Empires adds the map mode but keeps pretty much all the other elements. So you can go with any of them and they are a full purchase and are all fully worthwhile. Now with any of the other games, it works pretty much the same way. So Dynasty Warriors 8 has Extreme Legends. It also has an Empires and you treat it in pretty much the same way. And any of the other spin-off titles, so uh, Arslan Senki, which came out recently, they are treated as independent games and any of them is a full experience. Now, will there be any more Samurai Warriors 4 games coming out? Probably not, but it is worth noting that all three of them come with their own full trophy sets, they get bonuses if you load between the games, and generally speaking, are all pretty fun. There's an evil that's been dreaming, but now it's softly screaming. From the darkness, their power will grow. Their voices are made of poison. When you listen, you are sure to be disturbed. You can lock your doors. You can say your prayers. No creature can resist their wicked words. Never mind, no need to worry. That's all just a story of the whispers of the old gods. <laughs> now with the introduction of the new standard format and the wild format, we have Whispers of the Old Gods. Which is basically our big brand new expansion, which introduces a whole bunch of new mechanics so far what we've seen. The most interesting one actually is Cthune, the big god that will come in as a 10 drop with massive stats, which will be buffed even more so by various cards that, that have been announced, which will add to his stats, when it, like whether he's in your library, in your hand, or on the battlefield. Yeah, and they're certainly bringing in these new mechanics as they're removing some of the old ones yeah. from uh, previous expansions, uh, but they're keeping the classic cards as well. So Good for you, it. because so you got into yes. the Hearthstone game fairly late, didn't you, Tim? Yes, so I'm still playing uh, my Tavern Brawls to get yeah. the gold, to play the solo ex uh, solo adventures, but there's no solo adventure in this expansion, so... No, that's a small one that you get on every other one. Yeah. But, like, you, but how does that feel, though, considering you've, sp you've blown, you spent money on, on Next Ramus? I but... didn't. Oh! I bought it with gold. Yeah, you bought it with in-game gold. That could have been spent opening packs, man. Packs! <laughs> But like, how do you feel like, considering that's now rolling out of standard and into wild? Um, I'll probably still be playing wild because yeah. it's what I'm familiar with. Uh, uh, and certainly building decks is something that doesn't come easy to me. So just I'll do just, just stick do with, with the rest, what I know. Do what the rest of us do. Just net deck it. It's worked out fine, except for the mid-range druid, which I net deck, which is going to be so, so nerfed by the time Whispers of the Old, Gun Old Gods comes out. Oh. <laughs> So with Final Fantasy XV being on some release date out there, nobody actually ever knows. We've actually got Bravely Second, the follow-up of Bravely Default, what, three, four years ago now, is it? Uh, is it yeah, two? Been, two? Two? Might have been... Two years, yeah. I think. I can't remember. Something like that. But we've got the follow-up. It's a game. It's on the 3DS. And it's very much good fun. Yeah, so um, it does follow on... The story does follow on directly from the uh, last game. So it's sort of you'd probably want to play the last one before you got into this one. Um, and it just follows the main characters as they run around and uh, try and figure out, try and defeat this, the Kaiser, this new threat that's appeared. And save the world again, yes. who knows, it's RPG. That said, there's a lot of few differences here. You've got your, I guess, changed bonuses with your fights. So if you actually keep fighting after the first fight, you get more experience for each fight. It gains a bonus. It's a good way that they've done it. It's nice because it makes the like farming a bit quicker. Bit quicker. You, you don't actually have to get into another engagement. It just yeah, it just they follow on from each other. You get the multiply. You get way more. It's awesome. And it's a better risk reward thing because you keep your BP, you keep your health. It's a smart actually idea. We once you keep thinking about it. 
They've changed a few other things too. They've got the uh, commands for your automatic um, get play. Auto battles, so, yeah. Yeah, auto battles. So you can actually set, like, basically, I want uh, for the first one to be all attack, second one to be all magic, third one to be all default or something. And it works really well. I would kind of maybe want something that, like, can change between each one. So you could, like, go default oh, to can, four yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. like, but then that might be the third one. Yeah, so that uh, is the game. This game is all about con uh, convenience. So it's the first game was already had really good gameplay, and this game, the changes they've made have only been refinements. So it makes it so much better, makes the grind better, it makes it more fun to play, and it's really great. Mm, but I, the one thing I didn't really enjoy, I guess maybe because the grind was just a little bit too easy, I was always over farmed early. Like mm. the bosses and stuff just didn't feel compelling to, I guess defeat or even like be cautious because I was just so powerful I was just the farming was so easy to do that I was always like 10 levels over what I should be and I just like I don't even have to block your attack I can just you know take it to the face um yeah so I found myself a bit like that as well but I did think it was a good feature because at the end of the day you could just choose not to use yeah. it so but yeah that said there is the difficulty options too so you can set it to harder if you want I wish normal was a little bit harder than it was hmm. That said, there's always hard mode. Music, still fantastic. Looks good, it sounds good, I love it. And something I have, I've had a lot of people ask me this question, um, does Bravely Second do the same thing at the end of it that Bravely Default did? And it didn't do it, I was so excited. So yeah. for those of you who are worried about that, don't be concerned, it does not do that crap. It's that good. and if you like Supercell or Rio, you're gonna have fun too. Yeah, it's a really great game, very good RPG. So you, the viewer at home, could have almost felt the enthusiasm radiating through your screen that Charlotte and Co had for Bravely Second. I wish I had this enthusiasm, but I just look at the game and I just, just realise that I do not have the time or emotional energy to sink into such a dense game like Bravely Second. Yeah, it's really hard and quite... Uh... It's difficult to get into series like Bravely Default, Bravely Second yeah. because oh, yeah, it's yeah, so I intimidating. Yeah, yeah. It's like you'd want to play the the first game in the series as well, and there's also the fact that it being on 3DS. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and you're just starting to dust off your 3DS again recently, aren't yes, you? Yes, I've started taking the train again, so that's like yeah. an excuse to play 3DS because so I want to play playing it at home. Spirit Tracks, obviously, right? Oh, it's obviously. Yeah, uh, it's all about the puzzle swap, actually. <laughs> no, <laughs> getting those street passes. Agreed. It's all about the puzzle swap and then listening to the puzzle swap music. On on the loop. <laughs> yes. It's almost still the best thing about the 3DS. Yes. But, well, but of course, Pokemon and all the games are coming out in the future. Yes. But Street Passes. You know a good place to get Street Passes? Where, Tim? Supernova. Hey! <laughs> Which is coming up in April in uh, Queensland and on the Gold Coast as well as Melbourne. Yes, featuring such, um, what's called, uh, big pop culture stars as Jack Leeson from Game of Thrones, Joffrey himself. He's nicer in person, we promise. <laughs> and Christopher Judge from Stargate, which is and always good. Plenty more, so just check, check, it, check it out. Check out your local guide to see if any of the guests interest you. Yes, but that's it for this this week. Next week, we take a look at uh, Clancy Tom's Long Division. <laughs> <laughs> and we also take a look at Hitman, which is now a monthly series, or an, an, an installment series. Yes. Much like a Telltale game, too. It'll be very interesting to see how that works out for Squeenix. We'll but, find out next week. So visit our website, www.newgameplus.tv. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash newgameplustv. Follow our Twitter and Instagram at newgameplustv. And follow us on Twitch and YouTube. We are newgameplustv. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Tim. We'll see you guys next week.